right so now we will talk about circumventricular organs as i told you previously that in the blood brain barrier right blood brain barrier in the central nervous system in some specific areas is modified and those modified areas of blood brain barrier uh, that or you can say th these are the areas where usually blood brain barrier is more leaky they act as special windows right between the perivascular system and micro environment of the central nervous system right they act as secret windows right and we will see exactly what are these windows and where they are located and what is their function now again i draw the central nervous system and in the central nervous system let me draw this is your cerebral hemisphere and here is midbrain pons medulla and yeah okay and here it is now before i really go into detail these special organs which are called supravent uh, periventricular uh, circumventricular organs they are around the special cavities as i mentioned that central nervous system private environment is like a lady's world right and it must have special cavities now those cavities are csf filled cavities and I, i'm not going to make an anatomical diagram i'll make a very simple diagram right i'm going to draw the third ventricle but before i draw the third ventricle the very important structure here uh, and this is anterior pituitary and and yes posterior pituitary i will make it very large out of proportion for explanatory purposes anterior pituitary and here it is posterior pituitary and there is a little swollen area here which is called tuber sinarium and inside this area is called median eminence right and there are special cavities inside and i will draw on these cavities are csf filled cavities there are two lateral ventricle in between the lateral ventricle there is third ventricle and then there is fourth ventricle i will just draw the third ventricle let me draw okay this is the anterior wall of the third ventricle this is the roof of the third ventricle and here it is okay let me make the anterior wall this is anterior wall of the third ventricle roof of the third ventricle third ventricle is a structure like that here is the roof here is the anterior wall and here it is posterior wall and here it is floor and floor goes like that down and it has little bit dips here right so this is the this cavity is third ventricle and here it has a special pipe from where there is a drainage system going down and this is called cerebral aqueduct right so i'm just uh, making this third ventricle over here and and as you go down this is cerebral aqueduct behind the pons and medulla it enlarges and makes which ventricle fourth ventricle then then spinal canal is continuing downward right now this is and of course there is a vent interventricular foramen here and there is interventricular foramen on other side is that right and right and this right interventricular foramen leads to right lateral ventricle and left interventricular foramen leads to left lateral ventricle these lateral ventricles are not shown in this diagram right now there are specialized areas i must call them physiological windows or physiological physiologically leaking point in the blood brain barrier or modified points in the blood brain barrier all these points are around the third ventricle and fourth ventricle because these points are around this area these are called uh, collectively as circumventricular organs right one of the circle circumventricular organ here is posterior pituitary right <coughs> other is median eminence right now posterior pituitary which is also called neuro hypophysis right blood brain barrier in the posterior pituitary will not be effective 
it should be broken here why i will tell you later then blood brain barrier is also broken in another area in the median eminence which is part of the hypothalamus and then in front in, in the interior wall of what is this third ventricle you know here is what is here optic chiasma and here is interior commissure right and between them this wall is called lamina terminalis just in front of lateral and lamina terminalis here is also an area where there's a bunch of capillaries here and these capillaries also have broken blood brain barrier this is called what is this area this is organum organum vasculosum vasculosum of this is lamina terminalis lamina terminalis terminalis by the way what is the embryological importance of lamina terminalis anyone you know when uh, in the uh, in the embryo when uh, the development of neural there is neural plate the neural fold the neural tube and then actually this is the point where there is anterior neuropore which usually closes on 25th day right and if this interior neuropore does not closes well right lamina terminalis does not form and there is a big opening in the forebrain and that condition is called anencephaly anyway that is not our uh, discussion right now i'm going to talk about circumventricular organs from here we start number 1 i have discussed posterior pituitary number 2 i have discussed median eminence then i have talked about organum vasculosum of lamina terminalis which is also called o v l t then in between the interventricular foramina in the roof of third ventricle right just above it there are special structures passing by and this is called fornix what are these called fornix right these are from hippocampal hippocampal gyrus let me tell you from here from where the fornix come actually hippocampal gyrus here hippocampal system from here lot of white fibers go forward right this is called fornical system right this fornical system here is just above the roof of third ventricle there is right fornix and left right now here there is another vascular area bunch of capillaries lot of capillaries here in between the interventricular foramina and this is called this also has broken blood brain barrier and this is called sub fornical yes sub fornical organ this is a vascular organ right so how many we know we know posterior pituitary neuro hypophysis median eminence then there is organum vasculosum of lamina terminalis which i will call now now onward i will call ovlt and then there is sub fornical organ then behind here there is uh, what is this pineal gland pineal gland is the part of which part of the central nervous system fore brain mid brain or hind brain pineal gland is part of which part of the central nervous system is part of hind brain people who believe this raise their hand okay you are wrong who people who believe this is part of mid brain they are also wrong and and people who believe this is the part of the fore brain it is also wrong all of you are wrong <laughs> pineal gland is now not considered the part of the brain the way anterior pituitary is not considered part of the brain anterior pituitary and pineal gland both of them are glands which are associated with the brain but posterior pituitary is the part of the central nervous system pineal gland is basically an endocrine organ which produces some hormone most noteworthy is the melatonin right which controls your wake and sleep cycle and circadian rhythms and it also uh, controls very important thing other than sleep and wake cycle and circadian rhythms pineal gland controls a very important thing that is the mercy on the children it does not allow premature puberty it's not very common to come across a boy who is just 
uh, six year old and make some woman pregnant. It's very unusual, I think. And you cannot get a girl who is uh, menstruating and just six year old, right? It's very unusual, which is of course a pathological condition. Normally, why puberty come at a specific age? Because Melatonin in early life is produced in higher amount and keeps suppress the gonadal functions, right? And by that time you become to those nasty years when suddenly world become flowery and beautiful and color of lights, right? In those years actually this darkness sensitive hormone which is produced more in the darkness, melatonin goes down and world light up and suddenly you know that the world does not the world is not limited to just your mother and father or brothers and sisters. There are so many other interesting things, right? So this is the play of pineal. pineal gland. Everyone face is radiating. Good. And then pineal gland is also considered uh, what is this area where blood brain barrier is broken? But technically, actually, it, is, it should not be considered part of brain. But in some books, when they mention about circumventricular organs, they also mention about pineal gland, right? Then, here there is posterior commissure, right? In the midbrain, if I draw the midbrain here, it's a section of the midbrain, here is pretectal nuclei, and the commissure between them. This is called posterior commissure, right? This is the midbrain from the front, right? Now, there is a posterior commissure here, under that, there is another area where their blood brain barrier is broken and this area is called subcommissural under the commissure by the way what is commissure who is too good in what is commissure okay he is saying actually let me tell you fibers which connect the bundle of fibers which connect the top and down axis of the brain they are tracts bundle which connect anteroposteriorly their association fibers and fibers which connect right left I know why you are smiling that is called commissures so this is posterior commissure right uh, they are laughing because it's one of the very first lecture in neurology I mentioned introduction to neurology how to classify the fibers in the brain anyway let's come back posterior commissure just under the posterior commissure there is subcommissural organ right so how many are there okay let me tell you this is posterior pituitary then Median eminence, then OVLT, then subfornical pineal gland, right, and then subcommissural. And last but not the least, in the floor of the fourth ventricle, in its most caudal part, anteriorly, there are two structures, bilaterally, right and left, and these are called area postrema. Right? So how many structures can be considered as circumventricular organs? Right? Again, here we have mentioned seven. In some authors, they exclude the pineal gland, and some other authors they will exclude the subfornical because, classically speaking, in subfornical organ, blood brain barrier is modified but not broken, right? That is why some uh, authorities don't mention it as no they mention it as circumventricular organ they don't mention as an area where blood brain barrier is really broken in all other areas broken right here it is simply modified now I will discuss one by one all these things again we'll repeat it first is neuro say it loudly what neuro hypophysis number two median eminence number three OVLT number four sub fornical then pineal gland then and then area posterior. Now one by one we'll deal them. You're not supposed to really know a lot of detail about all these structures but some basic information. First of all, what about why? First of all, very basic idea. Why blood brain barrier is broken or modified in these area? These special windows are number one. Here the blood substances can relatively with ease come transfer either way. So some of these area act as sensory areas, right? They sense the composition of the blood. And if some neurons are want to sense the composition of the blood, then blood brain barrier should be broken, right? For example, I will tell you later on, there are osmo receptor in OVLT. So blood brain barrier must be broken. Here this is concerned with the thirst. 
but thirst for to sense the thirst angiotensin 2 should be able to act angiotensin 2 is a peptide so it should be blood brain barrier broken and come over here so what is this these are sensory what is this sensory circumventricular organs in the same way area postrema it also uh, you can say studies it is exposed the neurons in under the area postrema they are exposed to the uh, multiple substances or chemical composition of the blood and they are especially sensitive to the emetic substances which can induce the vomiting is that right so it means this is also acting as a sensory see so sensory windows these are the windows to look at the blood is that right women love to look through the windows you know so what is this ovlt is a sensory especially as osmoreceptors subfornical is sensory for thus and and this is sensory for emetic substances right for example if chemotherapy is done in cancer patient this, they feel too much nausea because these substances what is this chemotherapeutic agents anti-cancer drugs they go uh, many of them enter into this area because blood brain barrier is uh, broken here and stimulate the neurons under it right then some are secretory right you can throw the things out of windows also is that right you know about this thing either the women are just looking out of the windows it's a traditional old societies these days there's no need cell phone has made a lot of uh, dramatic changes right there's no need to go to the window but or if someone is passing by they love to throw something it's even the very special situations right now in the same way there are some groups of neurons through these windows those neurons throw something out we can call them secretory functions for example through this area posterior pituitary as i mentioned later on oxytocin and, vis and vasopressin is secreted out then i will talk about median eminence some products from here are secreted out pineal gland secrete the melatonin. melatonin and so and so forth so what we can say generally speaking generally speaking these physiological windows circumventricular organs or physiological windows where blood brain barrier is little bit disrupted right so somewhere they are acting as sensory organs look from the windows out and see what's going on in the blood and somewhere they act as secretory areas where neurons are releasing their products throwing out of the windows into general circulation done now we come one by one first of all i'll talk very briefly about posterior pituitary anterior pituitary and here is posterior pituitary and this is at the top is hypothalamus and fundibulum anterior pituitary posterior pituitary now actually this is a site where vasopressin is released which is also called ADH and oxytocin but actually ADH is produced in a special nucleus and nucleus is here these are the neurons in this nucleus and these is supra optic optic paraventricular is for oxytocin from here the neurons go out and they release here now look at these neurons right from which nucleus supra optic nucleus where cell bodies of neurons are present and from this supra optic nucleus neurons uh, axons are going down and these axons terminal they are having vesicles and these vesicles are loaded with antidiuretic hormone or more appropriately called vasopressin right and when uh, so what really happens that this uh, these peptides these are peptides these peptides are produced uh, vasopressin or adh are produced in supra optic nucleus predominantly and then these peptides go down and they are stored here and when stimulus comes these peptides are released, released into blood if these peptide need to go to the general circulation what is this general circulation then as neurohypophysis is part of the center of a system blood brain barrier here should be broken so what really happens that if i put here this these are neuropeptides here the endothelial cells in this area they must not have what tight junctions and they must be fenestrated so we can say 
that actually most of the areas blood brain barrier has non fenestrated capillaries but in what is this circumventricular organs the endothelial cells are fenestrated except subcommissural we'll discuss that later right now so because this is so what happens when these peptides are released they can easily pass to the blood right in the same way there is another uh, what is this para ventricular uh, you can say nucleus it's better to make like this so you remember this is the nucleus from here they come out and release what oxytocin oxytocin para ventricular this oxytocin is also a short peptide and needs to get into general circulation so it must be also having uh, surrounded by capillaries which are fenestrated and where blood brain barrier is broken. broken is that right why i made it like that because oxytocin is involved into milk let out or let down response let down and let out my english is not good simply uh, when uh, milk ejects i think i don't know how to say it so uh, get out okay get out when milk is thrown out okay whatever you want to say but oxytocin plays a very big role there okay this is one thing secondly oxytocin has also has a role in something very important uh, childbirth childbirth do you think males also have oxytocin dr bakas but they don't have breast and uterus i think so what oxytocin is doing in the males yes dr bakas you want to keep your information okay yes do you do, do you think only females have oxytocin or males also have what oxytocin is doing in male body for attraction i mean if i inject you oxytocin you will develop attraction no the right word is is partly right let me tell you let me tell you oxytocin is a bonding hormone it's a cuddle hormone it's really okay loving hormone actually when one human being touches the other human being in both of them their body there's a release of oxytocin and if you touch someone again and again and again and hug and kiss and right even especially when the orgasm is there there's a big surge of oxytocin and oxytocin act in the central nervous system on the neurons and develop emotional bonding between the human beings is that right that is why it is called bonding hormones bonding hormones right and here i would love to mention one thing usually females release more oxytocin as compared to the men that is why usually female get more strongly bonded with the men and men do get bonded but weakly and they can drift away easily is that right and women can never understand why men don't remain loyal they are designed wrongly or differently i must say right so oxytocin hormone is a bonding hormone too right so female releases lot of oxytocin that is why they get emotionally bonded very quickly not quickly strongly remember girls don't get attached quickly they can attract anyone quickly but bonding takes time right and here i must mention one thing the something which is called love in the beginning stage you know the early days of love when you get involved and suddenly world changes that days that depends on that does not depend on oxytocin that depends on no that depends on serotonin dopamine and norepinephrine serotonin dopamine and norepinephrine these uh, substance neurotransmitters when they are too much in your brain and especially when you think of your beloved person or you look at the photo or look at the person these har uh, these neurotransmitters surge and you know what these neurotransmitters they keep in heightened alert state and uh, they suppress your areas of brain which are concerned with analysis and enhance the activate the areas which are concerned with emotional so you are a heightened emotionality about that person without any sensible analysis right and you are in love is that right so in the beginning of love usually your early phase is dominated by what Sorry. dopamine serotonin norepinephrine but as time passes by the purpose of these three is to keep the male and female bonded and of time until what female gets pregnant and baby is there yes but meanwhile as time passes by both of them start releasing male and female more and more oxytocin and then their bonding come 
so that if really bonding occur that baby which come due to some planned or unplanned inadvertent activity both of them may remain bonded for years to take care of that baby right so in this way the early part of the love the magical part where serotonin dopamine and norepinephrine is very high concentration that is the part of the love which is basically excited stage and you don't think of anything and you just go ahead with your love you want plan to go ahead in the after the your loved one even if he is or she is going to hell right right but if you really get involved and stay together then enough oxytocin is released so that if there's a baby then what should happen you should be bonded bonded enough but men are in trouble usually you know what happened they attach with one woman get this uh, special magical what is this this uh, dopamine serotonin and right right and then they get male and female get bonded but some of some men are addicted to that early phase so then they find another woman and want to experience that thing and so and so forth and women never understand where the old true love days have gone where they have gone but still they may love each other why they love each other oxytocin is there you may find a man who says i love my wife i don't want to hurt her but i want to have multiple romances extra what extra cellular activity no extra marital activities some men who cannot control themselves they want to have those activities but at the same time they don't want to hurt their family maybe in the family they have oxytocin going on bonding and other side they are having dopamine serotonin and norepinephrine activity so what really happen that excitement phase of love some people like to repeat it again and again is that right and very important thing and what happen why nature plans that after some times those three excitatory hormones neurotransmitters should go down you know why because in early love when serotonin dopamine and norepinephrine is there you focus more on your relationship and so much focus on your beloved that many important things in life you are not doing or they are disrupted they are disrupted but actually if you continue like that life will be destroyed so nature just keeps you in magical moments which is usually 6 months to 2 years depending upon the couple and then that spell breaks and oxytocin come to hold you together when oxytocin is high then man can go out and still start working and focusing on other things in the world and women can focus on the baby you are understanding in most of the couples this only happens once or twice in a life and 10% couple are lucky they repeatedly fall in love with each other right but for men what happen usually they go look after where they can get that spell again and again and for women what they do it's almost every woman complain with her loving husband those are very good days when you used to love me you used to bring the flowers of course now he is not bringing flower but maybe he is bringing other things maybe he is bringing table and chair and rice but she is not happy for the things you are getting it so what really happens women also long for those days and men really go for those days you are understanding so purpose of oxytocin is just to what bond and in this way passionate love passionate love which depends on no passionate love which depend on dopamine serotonin and norepinephrine with the time convert into affectionate love passion is finish between husband and wife and affection is developed and affection continues okay let's come back so we were talking about that this is basically para para ventricular nucleus so supra optic nucleus uh, and para ventricular nucleus they are producing the peptides which are released from the posterior pituitary into uh, general circulation through the fenestrated capillaries right uh, and these two adh and oxytocin are released this is one area where blood brain barrier is broken other is median eminence here now i'll tell you why in the median eminence blood brain barrier should be broken actually in the median eminence as you know in the anterior pituitary the cells produce lot of hormones all of you know that growth hormone is produced 
thyroid stimulating hormone is produced, ACTH is produced, F FSH is produced, luteinizing hormone is produced, prolactin is produced. You understand it? Prolactin. Now, anterior pituitary produces a lot of hormones. But basically, these hormones are regulated by their secretion is regulated by special neurons which are present in the hypothalamus. These are neurosecretory systems here in the hypothalamus. In the hypothalamus, there are special neurons and these neurons have their nerve endings in the median eminence. They have nerve endings in the median eminence. And these neurons release uh, regulatory substances which should be carried, these are peptides, which should be carried from the median eminence of hypothalamus to the anterior pituitary so that hormone release from the anterior pituitary should be either inhibited or stimulated depending upon the regulatory peptide. The thing is that if blood brain barrier is not broken here, if blood brain barrier is not broken here, then they cannot enter into blood and reach here. So nature has produced here also vascular network where blood brain barrier is broken and fenestrated capillaries are there and endothelial cells don't have tight junctions so that these neuro secretory product from the median eminence they should enter into this network of capillaries and then should be taken to yes where where to the anterior pituitary and this is called hypophysial Hy sorry, sorry. Hypothalamic, hypophysial portal system. Hypothalamic, hypophysial portal system. So here, blood-brain barrier should be broken in median eminence so that regulatory substances which are released by the nuclei here into this circulatory system, which will take these regulatory substances to the anterior pituitary and release them and influence the release of different hormones from the anterior pituitary. So this is the, the reason why blood brain barrier is also broken in median eminence. Outer part of median, the swelling, if you observe the brain from inferior aspect, there is a swelling here, which right? And this swelling from outside, it is called tuber cinerium, right? Tuber cinerium. And inside it, the swelling is called median eminence. Am I clear? No issue here. Then next, we have discussed the first posterior pituitary, we have discussed the median eminence. Now we come why the blood brain barrier is broken at OVLT. OVLT, organum vasculosum of lamina terminalis. Actually, here blood brain barrier is broken because these neurons here are sampling the blood. There are different substances from the blood peptide from the blood which can enter into these neuronal networks and in modify their action right and before i really go i want to mention that the ependymal cells over these organs are slightly modified modified ependymal cells which are over from the ventricular side which are over the circumventricular organs they are slightly modified and these modified ependymal cells are called tenicides any sides anyway let's come back OVLT what are the functions of OVLT because it senses the presence of certain peptides in the blood so blood brain barrier should be broken here so that those peptides reach to the group of neurons here and influence their behavior specifically I should mention two at least number one angiotensin 2 number two uh, some cytokines like interleukin 1. Number 3, some neurons here act as osmo receptors. It means some neurons here, if they are exposed to the blood, they can determine, they are sensitive to the osmolality of the blood. Right? And in simple word, if blood is becoming thick or thin, they can determine that. Right? Accord then, when you are thirsty, thirsty angiotensin 2 level in the blood goes up they are sensitive to that also so when these neurons sense what is this that if you are thirsty or your blood volume is low and angiotensin is high these neurons can sense that 
right and then interact with you remember here was supraoptic nucleus they will interact with supraoptic nucleus and force it to release here what yes. anti diuretic hormone you understand it so what is the function of ovlt basically it has many many function i'm just mentioning one or two important function one function is it is having osmo receptors and if blood osmolarity become high blood become very thick or if angiotensin 2 level in the blood is high especially when you are thirsty or low volume in both conditions this these neurons which are interconnected in many places one of the places is supraoptic nucleus and the force it to release anti diuretic hormone which will go in circulation and eventually go to the collecting tubules and renal nephrons and reabsorb more salt and more water release of more water so that conserve the water in the body am i clear secondly blood brain barrier here it is broken and when you have uh, some significant inflammatory reaction in the body either there is infection or trauma or tumor or whatever if there is significant inflammatory reaction in the body some cytokines are produced in the body uh, notably interleukin 1 and when interleukin 1 level goes high in the blood circulation some neurons here can sense the presence of interleukin 1 and if interleukin 1 is higher these these neurons some of these neurons which sense the presence of interleukin 1 they will induce the fever how that these neurons will these thermo these neurons thermoreceptors they will interact with uh, certain other neuron in hypothalamus some will produce shivering to generate more heat and some other neuronal connection will produce a cutaneous vasoconstriction so heat is conserved so more heat produced and conserved and your temp body temperature will go up is that right so of course uh, if fever is going to be there it need to sense the interleukin 1 and interleukin 1 is a big guy and highly horny highly charged it's a peptide so there should be a window here ovlt right so ovlt is having osmo receptors it is also sensitive to angiotensin 2 it is also sensitive to interleukin 1 and uh, has a role in fever production is it clear no problem then we come ahead what is the subfornical it's very simple some uh, subfornical organs again all of them have many function i'm just mentioning one or two important functions yes what is your question sir how uh, ovlt play role as vascular outlet how ovlt plays a role as vascular outlet vascular outlet you tell me i don't know you mean that it's a place to pee or what <laughs> i don't know really no problem i have also heard many things i don't mention in the class right okay so what we are talking about that subfornical organ subfornical organ it is having neurons which are sensitive to the presence of angiotensin 2 sensitive to the angiotensin 2 remember ovlt is sensitive to angiotensin 2 subfornical organ is also sensitive to angiotensin 2 even area posterior is also sensitive to angiotensin 2 angiotensin 2 is a peptide so wherever it has to influence the behavior of the neurons there must be break and breach in blood brain barrier so actually this act as a thirst center and center for regulation of the fluid balance so when angiotensin 2 stimulates here actually it, it has many connections including a very important connection with ovlt so when you are thirsty and angiotensin 2 level go high it will stimulate subfornical organ this will stimulate ovlt some of the ovlt neurons that may stimulate some of the supraoptic nucleus and that may release adh so number one and adh will lead to conservation of the water plus this thirst feeling of thirst uh, that will increase hopefully if water is available your increase intake of the fluids am i clear any question up to there no okay yes so where are glucose sensing cells glucose sensing cells are glucose sensors they are present in hypothalamus but they are concerned with satiety center they are concerned with the satiety center and hunger center right that is also in med around the median eminence and there are also neurons here which are sensitive to leptin 
but we will not go into detail of that. Let's move forward, right? That will be done when I teach hypothalamus if I do teach. Okay, now we come to the pineal gland, which may be considered part of brain or may not be considered part of brain. In the pineal gland, right, again, blood brain barrier is broken, and the, these are pinealocytes which produce a hormone like melatonin, which is more increased during the darkness time. And melatonin is actively secreted from here to the CSF, right, and it, it regulates your circadian rhythms. Then we come to what is this? Sub commissural organ. Now, about sub, first of all, I should mention about sub commissural organ function in the human beings is not yet clear or not clearly established. Right? Secondly, it is different than other uh, circumventricular organs that here all the circumventricular organs are having fenestrated capillaries, but these capillaries here are not fenestrated. But like other circumventricular organ, there's a lot of bunch of capillaries here and overlying ependymal cells are modified as tenicides. In humans, its function is not very clear, but in lower animals, it is thought that neurons here, with the help of what is this? Subcommissional organ, they secrete special type of what? Glycoprotein. And this glycoprotein in lower animal, they assemble here as long threads. And these threads are called reasoner's fibers. Reasoner's fibers are threads. It is thought that in lower animal, they are responsible to keep the, these threads go from, what is the cerebral liquid duct, through the fourth ventricle, even up to spinal canal. It is thought that these glycoprotein threads are responsible to keep the ventricular system patent or open. Even now, they are thinking that in some babies, there is a genetic defect and they don't produce these glycoproteins enough. And in those children, this drain opener is not there. And cerebral liquid duct undergoes stenosis and block. And then a lot of, what is this, CSF accumulate into lateral ventricle and third ventricle which cannot get out so that may produce a condition called hydrosphalus. Am I clear? Then, but in the end I will still say its function needs to be established with more research. Then we come down. Here is your friend, area postrema. You have two area postremas, right and left. Both of them are present in the lower most area of the floor of the fourth ventricle, right? And area postrema is highly vascular area and here also blood brain barrier is broken, tight junctions are not there and endothelial cells are fenestrated. And area postrema, is, it has a group of neurons which are, which are sensitive to the amatic substances in the blood. They are sensitive to the chemical composition of the blood. And if there is some toxic substance in the blood or if you have eaten something uh, which is having some toxins, right, for, through the blood, those substances may reach to area postrema and that may stimulate these neurons. And area postrema is connected with two other nuclei here. There is dorsal nucleus of vagus here, dorsal nucleus of vagus here, and there is another nucleus, nucleus tractus solitarius. What is it? Nucleus of tractus solitarius. These three things area postrema, nucleus tractus solitarius, and dorsal nucleus of vagus. All of them together are called dorsal vagal triangle. They are called dorsal vagal triangle. Most of the afferent fibers or sensory fibers which are going through the vagus nerve to the central nervous system. These fibers are going from gastrointestinal system and from the heart and from the lungs and from many areas. Vagus is really vagabond. It is here and there and everywhere. So most of the sen sensory fibers as, uh, which are going through the vagus nerve, they end up into these areas that is what dorsal nucleus of vagus and tractus solitarius and area postrema right so all this together complex is called dorsal vagal triangle right now another thing this area postrema neurons they are also called chemo trigger zone chemo receptor trigger zone because if some chemical substances really trigger the activity here, you will develop nausea and maybe you also develop 
vomiting because these uh, dorsal nucleus of vagus has sensory fibers as well as motor fibers and if this area is over stimulated right then motor fibers will go, will go to the gastrointestinal system and produce reverse peristalsis and you may throw up is that right so these are the basic functions of circumventricular organs i will repeat it rapidly how many circumventricular organs are there <laughs> depending upon how you count right there may be five or seven right let's suppose we go with seven there's posterior pituitary first of all what are circumventricular organs these are specialized areas in the central nervous system where blood brain barrier is modified or broken right number one it is posterior where we need a breakdown of blood brain barrier to release the posterior pituitary hormone then in the median eminence where the neurosecretory cells which release the regulatory substances which are taken by the hypothalamic hypophysical system to the anterior pituitary to regulate the release of anterior pituitary hormone then there is ovlt organum vasculosum of lamina terminalis which is basically having what neurons which are sensitive to many many substances including the angiotensin 2 for thirst uh, there are osmoreceptors which uh, determine the osmolality of the blood and even there some of the neurons are sensitive to cytokines especially interleukin 1 which may induce fever then there is a fornical organ the, which is in between the interventricular foramen and the roof of third ventricle just below the fornical system and this organ is also sensitive to many substances notably angiotensin 2 and plays a role in thirst and fluid balance then there is pineal gland which may or may, some authorities consider part of the brain but now some many authorities believe it should not be considered part of brain and it should be considered an endocrine gland yes it is endocrine gland because its product melatonin also goes to the blood right and it also has broken blood brain barrier here why because melatonin and other hormones or neurotransmitters so they when they come into blood they are considered hormone when they are within central nervous system melatonin is considered neurotransmitters and other substances are supposed to go to the general circulation and then here is subfornical subcommissural organ uh, in humans its function is yet to be established but lower animal it is thought it releases certain glyco proteins and those glyco proteins make reasoners fibers and they are concerned with keeping the cerebral liquid duct open and then there is area postima in the lower part of the fourth ventricle right in the floor of fourth ventricle and area postima is actually under it there is a chemo trigger zone or chemo receptor trigger zone that it can sample the blood chemistry and if there is amatic substance it will stimulate the nearby vagal nuclei and tractus solitarius and vomiting center and nausea center and patient will feel nauseous and even may vomit right do you have any question about circumventricular organs other than yes anyone has a question about circumventricular organs Ah, very interesting question. He says, "Why pineal gland is uh, uh, called third eye?" First of all, we must know. Actually, pineal gland is sensitive to the ratio of darkness and light, right? And conventional thing is that you, if you don't have eye, you don't know it's dark or light. And two eyes, you know. And this is one more area which is sensitive to the light. So some people call it third eye. and even in old stories they think there were some monsters which had an eye on the back i don't want to talk about that okay but pineal gland actually is sensitive to the ratio of darkness and light if you want to know the pathway pathway is very funny from the eyeball to retina fibers go to the optic optic nerve then optic chiasma from optic chiasma a small group of fibers go to hypothalamus into subchiasmatic nucleus yes and from there yes fibers go to sympathetic center in hypothalamus and sympathetic fibers are multi multi neuronal down going fibers which stimulate the sympathetic outflow and that outflow neurons eventually go to superior cervical ganglia from their post ganglionic fibers around the blood vessels some of the, those post ganglionic fibers only some of them from the superior cervical ganglia reach to the pineal gland and this information about light and darkness balance eventually influences the functional behavior of the pineal gland okay class dismissed